What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit, this is your host, Zach, and today, subreddit is r slash fat people stories. I should probably just say you slash kinvara121 because that is pretty much the entire episode, other than the last story. Her stories are good, they're reliable, honestly. <laughs> This story's called, I am fighting fit, she says. 250 pounds, she weighs. Hello, my fellow sugar addicts from around the world. Greetings from a certain very rainy Indian city. Please forgive any formatting issues, if any. I have lurked quite a lot, but written only two other posts. Also, I just might have a series up my sleeve, so please pardon this really long piece. Only if this is enough to rustle your jimmies or give you a beat as Surge. Insert other fat people stories cliche, will I write more? Else I will just slink away with sincere apologies for having wasted your precious feeding time. On to the story. Maybe be me, Kinvara, 25 year old female, 5 foot 5 and 154 pounds. Down from approximately 212 pounds in October 2017, courtesy Kiko, Siko, I don't know, swimming and cycling. Be Nevia, 25 5 year old female, 5 foot 4, 125 pounds, super supportive friend, goes cycling and swimming with me sometimes, very protective of me. Definitely don't be Athena. Late 20s, early 30s, female, around 260, 270 pounds, I assume, with help from my body gallery, around 5 foot 2. Nevia and I had been friends since we were in kindergarten. She has always been a slim girl without much effort. I have seen her shoveling in junk food on a daily basis. Cookies, cakes, pizza, chocolates. She loves Kit Kats. Bonnie Puri, Ragta Patisa, Samosa, Puff Bhaji, Chole Bachure. Uh, please Google. You name it, she eats it. At least one to two fattening foods daily. She can literally eat a mountain of fries and not gain a gram. That lucky woman. Now, while she blessedly does not gain weight due to her eating habits, the downside is she has never felt the need to exercise. A few months ago, she went on a rainy day trek with some friends to a nearby waterfall mountain thing and discovered that she could barely walk at a mild incline for 10 minutes before getting exhausted. This scared her and pushed her into joining me in my exercise sessions. Now, while I have a propensity to gain weight fairly quickly, I have been reasonably active throughout childhood. Thanks, fitness freak of a father. I used to play badminton, volleyball, dodgeball, go cycling, swimming, etc. Last year, a budding relationship went bust when the guy said I was too fat for him to stay attracted to me on a long-term basis, hence the lose weight-a-thon. Anyway, so one fine June evening, I went swimming to this really nice pool I pay a bomb for. I usually swim for four days a week and go cycling thrice. Nevia and I were at the poolside, doing some mild stretching before we entered, when we see a reasonably overweight girl walk towards us, presumably heading to the changing rooms. She walked with a certain uh, swagger, with a very haughty expression. Then she looked me over, top to toe and and smirked. She trundled past into the changing rooms while I flushed with acute embarrassment. I am still very self-conscious of my body, and even if this girl was a good 100 pounds heavier than me, I felt gross and ugly. I surreptitiously glanced over my legs to see if more cellulite than usual was showing. I have a bulgy varicose vein below the back of my left knee, which I am extremely conscious about. I don't even feel like swimming anymore. Nivia had spotted that look too, and she glared after the lard bubbles retreating form. She could read my mind, of course. 20 years of friendship and all that. She just hissed. Why are you paying attention to that fat ass? Just jump in! Before giggling and muttering, let's wait and see what she looks like in her costume. That girl can cheer me up anytime. So we got into the pool, and once I started doing the laps, I almost forgot about the smirk. Now, Nevia tries to keep up with me, but only can manage two to three lengths at a stretch before she needs a I want to float and feel like a mermaid for just five minutes, damn you, break. I usually go 10 to 12 continuous lengths before stopping to catch my breath for a bit. About 10 minutes later, as I am done with my 12th length, I take a break to adjust my cap, etc. It is then 
that Miss Smirk struts towards the pool in all her glory. Like I mentioned, I am very self-conscious of my body, so I wear black swimming tights and a top, and not a costume which may reveal more of my arms and back. This lady, however, was wearing a halter neck style costume which barely skims her upper thighs. It's lime green. Probably the most unflattering color on someone of uh, generous proportions. And her proportions were copious. Her arms bulged out till the elbow before bulging at the forearm level too. Her navel was pressing against her costume in such a way that it made me think a child was trapped in her belly and screaming soundlessly to be please, please be let out. Her thighs though. They rippled with patches of cellulite that each seemed to have lives of their own, jiggling and jostling with every dainty step she took. Nevia and I exchanged a glance across the pool. She was floating near the 8-foot depth marker while I was at the 3.5-foot line, preparing to continue to lapse. Nevia openly grinned, looking from lard bubble to me. I didn't make eye contact with the lard bubble, but I smiled to myself. She stood by the pool near the 5-foot depth marker. I was ready to continue my lapse when she goes, Hey, you! I look up to see her giving me a death glare. She cocked a finger at me, indicating that I should come closer. Rude. Very rude. I stood my ground and raised an eyebrow at her. What? I said in a deadpan, I hope, voice. What are you laughing at, fatty? Standing in the shallow end like a child? Do you even know how to swim? This is not the beginner's batch timing. Now get out. There are some of us who actually know how to swim, she says without pausing to take a breath or even letting me answer. Oh, is there a problem? Pool not big enough for you to get in? Oh, is there a problem? Pool not big enough for you to get in? Says Nevia, who has by then sidled up to me in a mock, innocent voice. Call me a beta for not telling off the lard bubble, but I was super embarrassed at being called a fatty in public, with at least three to four other people within earshot. Nevia's comment broke the tension and I laughed. I ducked and started to swim wanting to avoid any further conversation with her. I can, however, be passive aggressive, so I did my best in swimming those laps. I combined freestyle, butterfly, and backstroke. Breaststroke is a tough bimbo, I simply cannot, to show her that I indeed did know how to swim. All this time, she has not stepped into the pool and is just watching me with her beady little eyes. Angry frown writ large on her face, while swimming Swimming my eighth length, I managed to relax enough to stop being conscious of her stare. And then, before I can fully fathom her intentions, she crouches in an about to jump position, runs the three feet to the pool, and belly flops straight in. Remember guys, the depth here is just five feet. Diving is absolutely dangerous in this depth and can cause serious injuries. Fortunately, I was quick enough to dart out of the way before she landed on me. However, she fell into the water with a loud splat and I knew she would be hurt. I went closer to check on her before she emerged. And yes, there are pool attendants to stop people from doing silly crap apart from very visible no diving gear signs. But as Everything just happened too fast. Then she emerges wailing. You bimbo, how dare you provoke me? I have broken my shoulder because of you. She screamed, clutching her arm. What the hell? How did I provoke you? Do you not have a shred of sense to be diving in five feet of water? Are you crazy? I yelled right back. Don't you dare presume to teach me. I am a state level swimmer. Don't you dare test my patience, fatty. She says, advancing towards me. Everyone is watching. The attendants start yelling at her to stop for us to break it up. She doesn't listen and trudges towards me. I am frozen. Nevia is watching this exchange with her mouth agape. Lard Bubble then shoves me. Once, then twice. I am angry by now and I push her hard 
hard so that she topples back. She rises again, no evidence of the dislocated shoulder this time, and with a loud harumph, she collides with me, shaking me like a ragdoll, clawing at my chest. People have started to intervene by now and a couple of guys pull her off of me. When she realizes she has been overpowered, she screams at me. How dare you insult my swimming? I am fighting fit! Fighting fit! I am strong as an ox! Just you wait! I will show you, you fat hog! I am the goddess of war! I will show you! Yes, guys. She actually said this. This came out of absolutely nowhere. Goddess of war? What? Thus, Athena descended upon, so not her home country, to shower us mere mortals with her benevolence. Was Athena hauled back to Greek heaven before she could show poor fat hog me her prowess? Stay tuned and find out next time on Fat People Stories. And Kinvara hits it out of the park yet again with another very well-written Fat People Story, or Fat Person Story. And honestly, I wish there was a part two, but I don't know, guys. And thus, Zack, master of subverting expectation, strikes again with another part two that you definitely did not expect. I am fighting fence, she says. Athena, part two, by user Kinvara, one to one. Got a shout her out, she's so good. How dare you insult my swimming? I am fighting fit. Fighting fit! I am as strong as an ox! Just you wait! I will show you, you fat hog! I am the goddess of war! I will show you! So spake Lardbubble, whom I will exclusively refer to as Athena from now on. Quick recap of characters. There's me, female, 5'5", 154 pounds at the time. Have lost 7 pounds ever since. Yippee! Nevia, 25, female, about 125 pounds. Athena, probably late 20s, female, 5'2", approximately 250 to 260 pounds. On to the story. Nevia was beside me by this time. She is the sort of person to burst into laughter at the most inopportune moments. This was one of them. She started cackling hysterically while I just stared at Athena with what I like to call the confusion confused Labrador face. Head cocked to the side, eyes agog with intrigued puzzlement, Athena continued to rant while being ordered to get out of the pool by the attendants as well as the matronly receptionist. The pool is pretty close to the reception area and the lady may have heard all the commotion. Since the pool is part of the health and sports club, there were other people milling around, getting from one place to another, who had also stopped to enjoy the show. Many were giggling. Athena heard the sniggers. They distracted her from me, the primary object of her attention and affection. Swifter than you'd think, she streaked past the attendants and the receptionist, hands raised to clobber the hapless spectators who then scattered like a flock of startled pigeons. Her thighs jiggled, her stomach rippled, her arms flapped in the evening breeze. One side of her swimsuit rode up her... Uh, um. Athena gave chase to two teenaged boys who seemed the closest and they sprinted away until she stopped, panting, grasping her knees. By this time, everyone in and around the pool was thoroughly entertained. Some were actually bent over with laughter, including Nevia. I just had my hands to my mouth, laughing all the same, yet afraid to show it for fear she would try another belly flop on me. The beast spotted Nevia laughing. The beast stared at her. Stared, stared some more, then having sufficiently caught her breath, bellowed something to the effect of <coughs> This, people, was Athena's war cry. Before she bent to pick up a slipper beside the pool and hurled it straight at Nevia's head. Thwack! Athena had proven her prowess as the goddess of war. 
She was good at war cries, she could run without being caught by the enemy, and she was a skilled marksman. The slipper hit Nevia square in the face. You come here right this moment! The receptionist had completely lost her cool, and despite being easily 50 to 60 pounds lighter, managed to literally drag Athena away from the poolside. Athena struggled, but the receptionist was unmoved and continued to pull her away towards the club office. I quickly looked over at Nevia to see if she was hurt. There was a vivid red mark on her right cheek and she seemed more shocked than injured. She picked up the slipper and threw it out. The attendants asked us all to leave the pool as they needed to get it cleaned. We filed out, headed to the showers, got changed, etc. All the while, Nevia and I raved and ranted about Athena, of course. However, Nevia was also like, Rarely does so much drama happen in our lives. This was entertaining. They might cancel her membership. Damn, I'm almost wishing they don't. While grinning like an idiot. As we left the club, we spotted Athena along with a middle-aged lady who seemed like her mother. They were in the midst of a heated argument with the club staff which was when they spotted us. That's her! That's the bimbo who called me a green Snorlax! Pointing towards me furiously. Stay tuned for more! Oh my gosh, Athena! Wow! She's supposed to be smart, clever, cool-headed, not this, uh, you know what she is. Majin Boo? This story's called, Trip to Brother's Lake House with Ham Fam Went Well. Until Sister Planet posted on my Facebook today. Good news! The visit with the solar system fam went well for once. Only minor comments about the weight of my son, 22, who is also very thin. I nipped that in the bud when I explained he still has symptoms of mono. Hams are always looking for a medical explanation for when someone is thin. He's not really still sick. He's just naturally thin like I am. But they want scientific evidence that you have to be sick to be thin. Worked like a charm and my son was off the hook. I only had to field questions about my pandemic exercise routine, which was minimal, and received nice compliments and not an inquisition about how thin I am. I saw my sister planet minimally. We didn't speak about our fight from a few months ago. We didn't speak much at all. Part of me thought it was because maybe she saw what a jerk she was to me. The days prior to the trip, she had called me. She was asking me to pick up her son, my nephew and godson on the way to my brother's lake house. First of all, the drive with traffic is eight hours. Going to her house to get her son adds another hour. Secondly, we weren't planning on leaving until after 4 p.m. We would get to her house at 11, get to my brother's at 1. Time change, 2 a.m. Ah, it would be bad enough without going out of the way, but so bad that an extra hour doesn't make it much worse. So I did it. I got my nephew. Just so my sister and her husband didn't have to babysit him while he's bored. The kid is almost 18. Roll eyes here. So maybe she dropped the big fight since I delivered on her request to get her son. Her husband asked me if the big fight was over. I said, I don't know. She's been really nice to me since I brought your son here. And he explained that he didn't want to put me out like that, but she insisted. Whatever. I saw her glare at me during lunch. My sister-in-law made brats. I took one half and a bunch of fruit. I had just eaten breakfast about 90 minutes earlier. She had two brats on one plate. The other plate was full of potato salad, pasta salad, and chips, etc. She rolled her eyes when our glances caught. No words were exchanged. Probably because she was still finishing her breakfast when she took up lunch. The next day, we went home and all was well. Until I opened up Facebook today and saw she put a meme on my page. It was a pic of a woman who looks astonishingly a lot like me. The caption was, 
do you have anything fat-free and sugar-free? And the waitress answered, For that, all we have is a napkin. So I replied, That does look a lot like me. Only difference is, I would be asking for full fat and real sugar. Gotta keep weight on these bones. And now I'll go back to not talking to her again. Wow, you handled that with class, and I am impressed. And good on you for going out of your way to pick up her nephew. That was very nice, and I appreciate that extra effort you went through if no one else does okay but the husband seemed to but really good job you seem to be a reasonable individual don't forget to like subscribe and hit that bell to never miss an episode